How do I put it? Uh, I'll put it to you this way. Innovation isn't your best friend. Innovation is your only friend. If you're in a high-wage economy and you have the highest standard of living in the world, and basically anything that's a low-level task is now either outsourced to some other place in the world or more likely a low-level application that a, that a machine is doing somewhere, uh, your, only, your only option is to create something, whether it's to create a solution or a market or, or a piece of technology. And I think there's, kind of, there's three big issues around this in the U.S. And, and uh, the, the first one, obviously, is, is the capability. I look at uh, our test scores, and I'm alarmed. Uh, you know, how are we going to compete in this world market, uh, being 47th in the UNESCO uh, test scores against the rest of the world. We've got to do a better job on education. It's not a nicety anymore. We've got to spend real money. We've got to take this very seriously. Two, uh, we have a long history of having a culture for innovation, but you know that culture has shown up all over the world now, and we're no, no longer the sole benefactor of this incredible culture that our ancestors gave us. We need to reignite the culture. We need to get our, our young people experimenting. We need to get our young people into places like the, like the Ben Franklin Partners. We need, to get them, uh, we need to get them assistance in trying to spread their wings a little bit, to exhibit some of that self-authorizing behavior and reestablish a culture of trying stuff. You know, isn't that the best part about America? Everybody gets a second chance. I mean, from the best person to the worst person, you get a second act. And that's, you know, if you're going to be that person, if you're going to be that innovator, you have to have that. The third thing is, and it's very important, is innovators need freedom. And it's not an issue of, of governments and how governments are going to work. It's not an issue of capital. It's an issue of can we create uh, basically barrier-free environments for these people to actually try some of this stuff. You know, and I think that's going to be a key. How do we find these places? And amazingly, where I'm seeing America go back to innovation is, is um, you know, they're going back to the coffee shops. They're going back to, you know, to incubators like they did in the old days. They're going, so the, you know, they're going now to, to Innocentive and Biosforum and Wikipedia. And all of a sudden we're starting to see these places where, where real voices and real challenges and real realities are being discussed. I think innovation is the only way forward. And, and boy, am I concerned that these three factors that we really start paying attention to, uh, the capability of our young people, the culture of our young people, and really paying attention to the freedom that they're going to need to really develop into the, into the type of people that we want them to be. There's an old saying. I think there's a great, uh, there's a great um, idea for your, for your uh, viewers. And that is the old, what we call, so do too model. So do too. Anytime you really learn to do anything, you have to see one, you have to do one, you have to teach one. That's how we teach doctors. That's how we teach engineers. That's how we teach successful people. I think what we're going to have to do is take some of these emerging innovators and we're going to have to put them in, uh, in, uh, in, in contact with, uh, with, our, with our more mature ones, which again is what these, uh, these incubators and these accelerators are doing so that people can actually develop the capability over time. Mm -hmm.